Welcome into another episode of Locked On Phillies. In today's episode, we fully turn towards our off-season programming and the type of content that we're going to be getting into over the next couple months. Of course, there'll be breaking news and stuff in there, but there's something interesting that I want to do over the next however many shows to uh, keep you up to date on the latest on your Philadelphia Phillies and also give you some in-depth look at the 2023 season and how we should evaluate certain players. So we're going to discuss all of that and give you an example using Bryce Harper during today's episode. Let's get started. You are Locked On Phillies, your daily Philadelphia Phillies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for checking out Locked On Phillies. I really appreciate it. My name is Connor Thomas. I'm your host. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And uh, please make sure you're rating, reviewing, subscribing to the YouTube, all that good stuff. I appreciate the continued support and the great season we had here on Locked On Phillies. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started to go ahead and check out our friends over at FanDuel. Now, I'm going to break down something that we're going to be doing over the coming month here. It's November 1st as I record this and what we're going to be focusing on as we head into the offseason. Now, this is only going to be part of the offseason. There's going to be other stuff built in. There will be days where there will be breaking news or something I read that I'm going to want to bring up to you guys. Uh, but the general framework of episodes going forward, I, kind of, I want to work through this uh, moving towards the free agency period. So this isn't going to be – once we get the free agency, we're obviously going to put together a list of – guys that the Phillies should target and stuff like that, and that will become the focus. But we have some time between now and then. We have some time to focus on the 2023 season still, and I know how it ended. I know that sucks, but I want to make sure that we properly evaluate each and every one of these players. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the 26-man roster that I used for the player grading. Uh, or Was it earlier in the week or last week? I did an episode recently, one of my last couple episodes, where I handed out grades for the 2023 season to pitchers, hitters, and a couple of staff members. So Rob Thompson, Caleb Gotham, Kevin Long, and also Dave Dombrowski all included in there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to devote a little bit more to breaking it down and also looking forward for each and every one of those players. So today we're going to start with Bryce Harper. Basically the process is going to be I'm going to start by evaluating their 2023 season. Looking back at it, looking through the numbers, we're going to do a deep dive. I'm going to tell you really if this player played up to expectations, what you should expect going forward, all that stuff. So we're going to dive into that. Then there's going to be questions about what there needs to be worked on for that specific player going forward to the 2023 season. Or if there's a question like in Bryce Harper's example, where is he playing? We'll dive into that and have a conversation as far as that's concerned. And then we're going to wrap up with just either my favorite moment for that player's season uh, something we learned about that player, like something unique about each player. And the fun thing is uh, I'm going to let you have some ability to affect what order I go in. So I'm starting with Bryce Harper today because this is going to be a pretty easy, basic evaluation. There's a fun question about where he's going to be playing, but the evaluation of Bryce Harper's 2023 season, I don't think is going to be very difficult. He played incredibly well. But what I want you to do is in each of these episodes, and I'm going to remind you in each episode, in the comments, tell me which player you would like to go next, okay? Uh, you'll be able to pick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick either. So if there's multiple choices for one player, let's say like five people comment and say Zach Wheeler, it's the most of any player, we'll go with that player next. If it's uh, one for a bunch of different guys, so like one person says Wheeler, one person says Nola, one person says Hoskins, one person says Romuto, like all that stuff. Uh, we'll go ahead and I'm going to go with just the first one I saw. So the top comment when I check the comments. So go ahead and let me know in the comments who you'd like me to go after next as far as the evaluation. And um, <laughs> feel free to pick whoever. I mean, if you want to pick Ryan Kirkering next, go for it. But um, yeah, let me know who you'd be most interested in hearing next. We're going to get to all 26 that were on the NLCS roster. Plus we're going to get to uh, Reese Hoskins, who wasn't on the roster because of injury. And we're also going to do some staff members, too. 
Rob Thompson for sure, Dave Dombrowski for sure. And we'll see how deep it takes us into the offseason if we get to Kevin Long and Caleb Cotham. But, uh, yeah, let me know in the comments what player you want me to evaluate next. We're going to get through all the players before I go on the staff members and everything there. But that's going to be the offseason programming. And I think it's going to be really fun to go through and evaluate uh, who ended up where as far as their numbers, whether I think they overachieved, maybe projecting out some numbers for next season if the player is coming back. If they're a free agent, we'll have questions about how does their free agency end up being handled by the Philadelphia Phillies. Or do I see them being back in a Phillies uniform next year? There are a whole bunch of questions on a whole bunch of stuff. So I know we're in the point where the Phillies are no longer playing games, of course. And we're into the offseason. And this will be a fun way to look back. And it'll be a whole episode devoted to that single player. I'm not going to do like two an episode or anything like that. No, it'll be an entire episode devoted to each individual player on the Philadelphia Phillies. So you can get a deep dive. So if you have a favorite player. Uh, if you have a guy that you hate, <laughs> that you were like, why in the world was this guy on the team this year? He stinks. Get rid of him. Like, I understand there's people who feel that way about some players sometimes. Uh, go ahead and voice that, and I'll go ahead and either try and convince you you're wrong or agree with you, depending on which player it is. So should be a fun little exercise. There's 26 players. Then you have the head coach, or the manager, rather, and the president of baseball operations and Dave Dombrowski. So that's 28 episodes. We do normally about – 17 to 20 episodes a month so it, it, it'll get us going through november that's largely what this is going to be i want you along for the ride i want you participating so that i hit the players that you're most interested in first and then we'll round out with the other guys so i appreciate that and i appreciate any support and uh, commentary that you guys have in the comments as we go through this to help me pick the next guy we're going to go into so bryce harper is the one we're getting into today one more thing I do want to let you know before we jump into the evaluation. I'm going to be mentioning this uh, through the whole month of November. If you'll notice, if you're watching on YouTube, I got the mustache rocking. And it's not just for no reason, right? November is Movember. And there's a great organization with Movember that does research for men's health and a lot of stuff out there that affects really just men's health in general. It's mental health, physical health, everything. They donate a lot of money for that, and you can donate money to them for that. Now, I'm working with them. I'm going to work with them to see if there's anything I could set up specifically. But the reason I'm rocking this mustache is to raise awareness for men's health for the month. And we may do something further. It's only the first day of November. I got to look into that a little bit further. But this is a decision that I wanted to focus on over the course of the month because I know the change of seasons can be tough on folks and everything like that. So uh, it's something that I feel strongly about. And I mean, yeah, if you look it up and go check out Movember, maybe you want to donate. Who knows? Feel free. I'm not trying to solicit any money from you right now. I just want you to watch the episode and enjoy. But if you're wondering why I have the mustache, that's why. And there might be more you hear about it in the future from me on this channel or my work at 97.5 The Fanatic and NBC Sports Philadelphia. So that's the explanation of why the facial hair has changed. And it's also an explanation of what we're going to be doing as far as our off-season content. So there you have it. Without further ado, coming up, we're going to jump into the Bryce Harper evaluation of his 2023 season and looking forward to questions for the future. We'll discuss that as we continue today's episode of Locked on Phillies. All right. I want to tell you about FanDuel, though, first. Uh, come on now. This NFL season with FanDuel, you're going to want to score early. And they're America's number one sports book. They can help you do that. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. So you got a big matchup this weekend. Philly, Dallas, one of the great rivalries in sports, not to mention like in the entire NFL. Like It's absolutely a huge game. Playoff implications potentially from this one. And you could just bet $5 on the money line. On either team. Now, I bet it on Philly, obviously. And if the if the Birds win, you get 150 bucks. Or if you want to bet it on the boys, you're a loser if you do. But if you like Dallas, whatever, you can do that. And if they win, you get 150 bucks too. It's 150 bucks if you bet a $5 money line bet that wins. And if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action than the deal they're giving out right now. And this time, I mean, the app's super easy to use. I've used it for years. It's awesome. You can bet a whole bunch of different things. You got parlays, player props, money line bets, futures bets, whole bunch of different things there on FanDuel. They're awesome. 
Anything you want to bet, they got it. So go ahead and check them out and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make sure your NFL season is going great. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, let's get into the Bryce Harper portion of the program. So Harper had a heck of a 2023 season, right? How it started was very interesting. He's coming off of Tommy John, remember? And the thought process, this was one of the big questions all last offseason. was like, wow, why do he wait an extra two weeks to get the surgery? That could cost him time in the regular season. What is he doing? He's going on vacation instead of getting surgery. You're going to miss him for like three months. Will he be back by the All-Star break? Will he be able to play this year to his ability? Like, what's going to go on with Bryce Harper in the 2023 season? And how much time are we going to see him miss? Well, guess what, folks? When you go to his game logs and you see when he came back, Bryce Harper had the fastest return of any player in history from Tommy John surgery. Pitcher, position player, anything. He had just an amazing, amazing return from that. He was like, I don't even understand how he came back so quick. He's a superhuman. And he started in May 2nd was the day he came back. We were talking about June, July May 2nd, he played his first game against the Dodgers. He went 0 for 4, of course, because it took some time for him to bounce back. But just that immediately turns him into Superman. And then the numbers that he put up this year, listen to this, 3.7 war in 457 at-bats, 134 hits, 21 home runs, a 293 batting average. Like, that's insane. He had 21 home runs in less than 500 at-bats. 21 home runs in 134 hits. I'm just going to go ahead and do the math on that. And that means that 15% of his hits were home runs. That's insane. Like, who does that? Especially coming off Tommy John surgery. And not to mention uh, something that's important, too, about Bryce Harper's rehab. You look at it and you say, okay, not only did Bryce Harper come back, but what Bryce Harper was able to do, he came back. And he brought Jeff Hoffman with him. Remember, Jeff Hoffman was one of the better relievers you had on the team this year. And Jeff Hoffman was only on this team because Bryce Harper went to the organization and said, yo, this guy that I'm facing in my rehab, he's got great stuff. We might want to look at him at the major league level. So Harper went out there and he vouched for Jeff Hoffman and said, yo, we need to look at this guy as far as a major league bullpen arm. And he went out there and Looked really, really good, and Bryce Harper deserves credit for alerting the organization to Jeff Hoffman. Now, Jeff Hoffman obviously deserves more credit for Jeff Hoffman's uh, success, considering he was the guy who did it, but still. like That's why Bryce Harper is amazing. He doesn't just handle his business. He lifts up other players. Bryce and Stott, the year he had, I got to imagine Bryce Harper had some influence on that growing up with the kid, or rather the kid grew up where he grew up, and they – He's kind of been a mentor to him in the young parts of his career. Like, there's a reason Bryson Stott is as good as he is. Part of it's Bryson Stott, but a little bit of a sprinkle in there is Bryce Harper. He's become a true leader, uh, a consummate professional. He loves Philadelphia. He shows up in big moments, NLCS notwithstanding. And he's just been everything you could have wanted. Uh, looking at deeper at some of the numbers this year, uh, as far as the stats for 2023 that at 293 his slash line 293 401 499 with a 900 ops uh, i mean just looking at this right compared to 2022 i know he missed some time in 2022 with a broken thumb and then he had the elbow issue here's how his slashes in 2023 compared to 2022 in 2022 he batted 286 higher batting average higher obp he had an obp of 401 this year 364 last year Better slugging percentage in 2022, 514 compared to 499. But the OPS was better this year, 900 to 877. Uh, I'm just looking at how comparable these numbers are to his MVP year. And yeah, back in 2021, he had an insane year. Like here's what the numbers were for Bryce Harper for his 2021 MVP season. He batted 309, 429, 615 was the slash line. As far as home runs, he hit 35 home runs. He had 42 doubles, which led the league. Like, yeah, 35 home runs in 488 at-bats. 
in 457 at bats this year, 21 home runs. So, I mean, he was unbelievable in 2021. He was really good in 2023. But that should just show you, right, as good as Bryce Harper's year was, he had a lot of time where he was working his way back. There was a big time power outage there uh, in like the middle of the season for Bryce Harper, where it took him forever to really get going. And then he hit home runs in bunches. Like he needed to come back from Tommy John surgery. It doesn't just affect your throwing. It affects your trust in that elbow and it affects the swing and you're focusing on rehab and you're not as zoned in as you are when you get a full spring training and everything. It goes to show like Bryce Harper had an outstanding year this year, but even more than that, he can have a better year next year, a much better year, because his pace in 2021 was significantly better. And I believe that's the player he's more likely to be. He seems healthy. The elbow is going to be fully healed, like all together. Probably not going to have to wear the brace next year, which that might be able to help him. Might make him feel more comfortable on the base pass. And the other thing that Bryce Harper did this year, too, we're just looking at his offensive numbers. But defensively, he was a huge help at first base. Being, to, being able to play there, being willing to play there, those were two things that really helped the Philadelphia Phillies balance out the way this team matched up defensively. So where will Bryce Harper be going into the 2023-2024 season? Or I guess it's just the 2024 season. It doesn't cross over. But I mean, even looking into the offseason, because they'll have to know soon here so they know how to attack the offseason and handle Reese Hoskins' contract situation. Where will he play defensively? Well, the good thing about Bryce Harper is he's versatile. He could DH, he could play right field, he could play first base, he could play somewhere else in the outfield if need be, but it seems like it's down to first base and right field. And that's one of the big questions going forward for Bryce Harper. I have another one, though, that I think is going to be an interesting conversation that we'll have coming up as we continue. But again, Bryce Harper, just outstanding numbers, a great year again. He's well on his way to a Hall of Fame career. Every home run he hits feels like it's the most clutch home run in history. Like, he's just a guy that performs day in and day out. And I know the bats went silent in two games in the NLCS. It kills you because of the spot. But it doesn't change the type of player Bryce Harper is, which is an outstanding baseball player and one we're very lucky to have here on the Philadelphia Phillies. I said ahead of this season, Trey Turner might be the overall best baseball player on this team. Sorry. No, it's still Bryce Harper. Uh, until I'm shown otherwise by somebody, Bryce Harper is the most important player on this team, and he took care of business coming back early from Tommy John surgery, battling through it, and doing an outstanding job this year. So his evalu evaluation, I mean, if I'm you out there, if I'm a Philadelphia Phillies fan, and I am, I don't think you could be prouder of the job that Bryce Harper did in the 2023 season, just top to bottom, everything. Base running, that's something we'll have a conversation about coming up because it's a question as we go forward, too. The base running needs to be better, but it's such a minimal part of the game, and it shows you the type of guy he is and how he's going to fight and be aggressive. And I'll take that guy over someone who's afraid of the moment every single time. Coming up, we're going to get into a couple big questions facing Bryce Harper going forward when it comes to what he needs to focus on and what the team needs to focus on considering him as you head into the 2023 offseason. We'll discuss that as we wrap up Locked On Phillies. All right. We know the number one biggest question with Bryce Harper is where he's going to play defensively next year. Is it first base? Is it right field? Let's take a deeper dive into this while we're focused on Bryce Harper, right? So Harper is a guy that came up as a catcher. He's got really good reaction time, really good motions to the ball. He is an athlete, but he's not a first baseman yet. I know he played it, but there are a couple times in the postseason and in the regular season where there's the toughest plays for him are the field plays about what ball he should get to and knowing where he's supposed to be. Like he can catch the ball. He can field the ball. Like that's not an issue. You get hit the ball 110 miles an hour at Bryce Harper. He's going to make a play on it. But what the issue is, is those little choppers in between first and second base that are Bryce and Stott all the way, but Bryce Harper might go for, and then it opens up first base and no one's there to cover it, or the pitcher's late and you're all over the place, or he's getting back there late and he gets run into, uh, like you saw in the NLDS. Like that was a situation that became scary because Bryce Harper didn't know where he was supposed to be. So he still needs to figure some stuff out there at first base. Right field, very comfortable out there. Yeah, it's what he played basically his entire major league career until he played first base. So 
he's got the opportunity to play right field again, potentially. But here's the issue, right? First base, there's a question of will you bring Reese Hoskins back or not? Right field, there's a question of if Harper plays there, what do you do with Nick Castellanos? One of those is an easier answer than the other. The first base question is easier because Reese Hoskins is not under contract with the team. You could just say, okay, we're going to let Reese walk. Hate to see him go. Great player, great teammate, great person. Bryce Harper's good at first base. We're going to leave him there. We're going to work on it over the offseason to turn him into even a better first baseman. That's one of the options at first base. That seems a lot less complicated to me than the right field situation because if Harper goes to right field, you already kind of have a log jam in the outfield with Marsh, Castellanos, Rojas, Pache, Schwarber, if he's potentially out there. And Schwarber should be the DH like every single game next year. But still, like these are all guys you have to consider. If you play Bryce Harper in right field, do you move Castellanos to left? Or do you play Bryce Harper in left field and leave Castellanos in right? Either way, you're taking a step down defensively from what you have with Marsh, Rojas and Castellanos out there because Harper he's a solid defender, but he's not a plus defender. I'll take Brandon Marsh defensively over Bryce Harper. I'll definitely take Johan Rojas defensively over Bryce Harper. So let's flesh this out a little bit and see what the best possible scenario for Bryce Harper would be in the outfield. I think it would be leaving Nick Castellanos in right. Bryce Harper plays left. Brandon Marsh takes over full-time duties in center field because Johan Rojas isn't quite ready yet, and Rojas becomes a bench player that's a defensive replacement until his offense improves. Now, maybe you feel that Johan Rojas needs to have more plate appearances at the major league level to develop into that type of player, and that playing him off the bench would halt his growth. I understand that. I get that. So that would lean towards Harper playing first base. I mean, the more I think about it, the more Bryce Harper playing first base seems to make so much sense, unless – there's a move coming, and that move would be a potential trade of Nick Castellanos. Nick Castellanos still has time on his deal. The Phillies would probably have to eat a little bit of that salary some way, but they could move him to a team that thinks he's valuable because he just had a really good season where he was an all-star and showed off some power, had 100-plus RBIs. That's a really good year from Nick Castellanos. He's up, his, he's up this defense. He's a desirable player. The Phillies could play Harper and Wright. They could trade Castellanos for pitching or for someone at first base who fits in a little bit better to the scheme for the Philadelphia Phillies and then go with that or just move him for like minor league pieces and then trade those guys for something like there's three options. Either Rojas is not going to play and Harper and Castellanos are going to be in the corners for the Philadelphia Phillies with Marsh and center or Marshall rotate with Rojas, something like that. But Marsh, Marsh, sorry, Harper and Castellanos in the corners. Harper at first base, Castellanos in right, same outfield alignment as the end of this year. Or you trade Castellanos, you play Harper in right field, you need a new first baseman, and you see what you get for Castellanos, but the outfield's more set. I mean, the easiest possible scenario to me is keeping Castellanos in right field, keeping Harper at first base, running the outfield back the way you have it, finding another way to acquire pitching, maybe even re-signing Aaron Nola or signing somebody in free agency. Because if you go out and you sign, like, I don't know, a Corbin Burns, you don't have to worry about trading Castellanos for pitching, and you don't have to worry about getting rid of him because he's productive. So I think the best possible scenario for Bryce Harper going forward is to continue to play first base. Unfortunately, that means Reese Hoskins, again, like I've been saying, probably not back with the team, which sucks considering how great of a person and teammate he is and how much he loves the city of Philadelphia. But that's – what seems to be the most straightforward option. We'll see what Dave Dombrowski has up his sleeve. But if you had to ask me today, I would guess that's how the Phillies are aligned on opening day next year. We'll see how it plays out. But you see how it's going to go. That's my evaluation of Bryce Harper with a couple of questions on what's going on going forward. Uh, The other question about base running, will he improve on it? I'm sure he's going to focus, but he's always going to be the aggressive guy. Uh, Can he have a better year next year than this year? Absolutely. We already talked about that. I mean, the rest of the stuff's relatively straightforward. He had a great year in spite of a major injury that he was recovering from. He's going to have a better year next year. He's going to be better at whatever position he plays. He's going to continue to work. There has been no signs of slowing down for Bryce Harper. He's great. Nothing to worry about there. So coming up tomorrow, we're going to jump into the next player. Now you can let me know in the comments who you want that to be. 
and I'll read the comments. I'm going to put the episode out tomorrow, probably around like two or whatever is when I'll be recording. Uh, so get in the comments before then. I'll check the comments as I'm setting up to record tomorrow, and I'll let you know uh, what player you're getting next, and we'll continue to do that. I also, yeah, I'm going to put a comment on this episode once I decide what player based on your uh, votes. So I'll let you know ahead of the episode so you know you can prepare for it. But, yes, it'll be fun. I love a little participation from you guys. That's all for today's episode of Locked on Phillies. Thank you for checking us out. Please make sure you're rating, reviewing, subscribing to the YouTube, all that great stuff. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'll talk to you next time. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, by the way. I'll talk to you next time on the next episode of Locked On Phillies.